Hi, I'm, I'm Travis Hawkersmith. I'm the VP of Client Strategy at Yumi. Um, I've had somewhat of an interesting path to this stage in that I was a global media manager at Intel prior to joining Yumi, and that experience really shaped our approach to research. Um, for all of you in the room, you've seen plenty of studies from media vendors that show why you should spend money with them. And that's not really the approach that we take. We much more try to do research is about the space that we operate in, which is online video at Yumi, but um, answering questions that come directly from our clients that help make more informed media decisions about the entire space. So we did a study with Nielsen last year that we referred to as mix and measure. And uh, this is something of a continuation of that study which you saw in the video. Um, and what we saw in last year's study is that Consumers are multitasking, obviously very intuitive. Um, and one of the places that they're multitasking a lot is in front of the TV, which we all do. So no surprise there, but it has pretty profound consequences for advertisers. So this year we turned to Yumi, Tommy in particular, or to Nielsen, Tommy in particular, to dive deeper on a couple of questions that we really didn't answer last year. So first, get a really good sense of when and how much consumers are multitasking. And what are some of the really common device combinations that they're using? And then more than that, what's the impact of all this multitasking? And what can you as an, a marketer do to reach consumers at the highest attention levels? So to do this, we did the only thing that we knew to do, which was go straight to the consumer and, uh, and watch them. And so we went to Las Vegas, which Tommy will talk about, and we collected two months of data over about 200 consumers. We encoded second by second uh, just hours of video content and came up with about two million data points that really fuel the research you'll see here today. So I'll invite Tommy on stage to talk about what we measured, how we measured it, and, uh, and, and what we learned. Uh, so Tommy? Thank you, Travis. And so, overall, really the focus of this study was to understand attentiveness. When in the face of all the options, you've got a big screen, you've got small screens, what's the impact on your attention? And what are people actually paying attention to? And what do people, um, what are some of the factors that influence that attention? You've got situational factors. Uh, we had people there that were in the environment by themselves. We had people in there that came with their spouses. So we do have some multiple situations that, to attest for. Uh, what you have available to you, which is the devices. Content, there's a lot of information about, and I heard a lot of uh, uh, things about content, the importance of content, the importance of g garnering people's engagement to that content and how it can influence levels of attentionness. Um, need states, need states change over time from young to old. Uh, literally, who wants to multitask versus who wants to pay attention and escape. And locations, that's, it forms a basis for clutter, right? You have a lot of things exposed to you, or are you just mainly focused on one thing? So this particular study is trying to form an environment that just looks at what happens when the realm is there for multitasking to occur. And what we wanted to do is just observe them. And we did it in an uninterrupted environment for 20 straight minutes and really looking at on the back end, coding some of these behaviors. But collecting all those data points really can open up a can of worms. So we wanted to focus on a few key metrics here. So out of all of the observations that we've seen, we wanted to understand the average usage. This is really basically how many, what percentage of the time in that experience were each device uh, actually physically enacted. The second one is the, uh, Primary usage, so when that device was enacted, what percentage of the time was it the primary focus to the, uh, to the people that were participating? And then we looked at overall attention. What's the overall percentage of the time that they were paying attention to something? And lastly, it's the ad attention that we're really paying attention to. When an ad was being presented, did they actually look at that device or did they shift their attention elsewhere? So to paint a very broad stroke, there were a lot of insights that emerged from the research, but one of the things that we really wanted to uh, call into uh, the spotlight is that people don't divide their attention evenly, and I think this is nothing new. This is something that uh, everybody 
uh, actually knows, but we can actually now put some information behind it and see what's the efficiency levels um, based on this unique experiment. And uh, really in multitasking situations, we know that the TV is the ever-present uh, screen that's on there. And there's some value to that, but when you're in a non-appointment viewing environment, um, what role do all the other devices play? So, and this, this kind of covers a little bit of what, what we talk about. And then when we bring it back to what it means for advertisers, which Travis will help, um, will help with that assessment, we look at what the potential attention lost from the TV ads might be relative to other devices. So, how do consumers multitask? Well, let's see. We have some of the data presented here, and let me just get these builds out. So if you look at these, uh, these arcs, what you want to look at is how complete those arcs are. The average usage, we can see that TV is still the predominantly uh, go-to device when they sat in there and they had all those choices available to them. The first thing they looked at was the TV. And the TV stayed on for the remainder, or most of the remainder of that session. And then you got down to the correlation between the screen size as the choices. Now, when you look at the primary usage, you see that things start to shift a little bit. How, in, how often was the TV the primary device? You can see that that arc shrinks a little bit. Um, on the laptop, the, the predominant uh, application that was used was Hulu. So it was really looking at content through uh, the laptop for a full-length uh, premium content program. And so you can see that that engagement is slightly higher. And then you look at the overall attention percentage, and really the more focused they were, really honed in on the small devices. And it's really uh, nothing unique. It's a very personal device, the smaller you get. And it just allows you, you have to pay more attention to it. So that's how we saw the overall ad percentage uh, increase as well for some of these devices. So this, this is a chart that let me uh, help dissect. When you looked at combinations, when one thing was on and then you had a second screen available to you, here's kind of an interesting thing. When you had the television on and the laptop was a second screen, 60% of the attention was focused on the laptop. As you got down to a tablet and the smartphone, you can see that that increases slightly. Now, relatively speaking, when you look at the laptop and when it was paired with the smartphone, you can see that the attention is still greater and so, but relative to the TV, you could see that uh, when the smartphone was paired with the TV, you got 71% versus when it was compared to the laptop. So you have different, what's, what it's showing is a different sensitivity in terms of what people are paying attention to. And here's a little bit of a chart that just really charted the second by second on average across all 200 respondents across the major devices. And really at the heart of it, the TV is the ever constant. You can just see it an ebb and flow. There's always somewhere in the experience some element of trial. They have kind of uh, sampled uh, something, and then you see inflection points at around the six to eight minute mark. That's when people are now naturally moving to other devices. And so the result of that is that the attention paid to TV drops significantly. And then you see that they start moving on to other devices. And whether they stay there, um, that that differed from person to person. So ultimately, this chart really speaks to the same thing. This is really a different way of looking at it. What it did was it inversed the attention versus the time it was on. And as you can just see that the coverage of uh, the attention paid towards TV, it, it starts to diminish over time when the presence of other options available to them. And this kind of just shows that when we looked across people, uh, we looked at the, under, the younger people and the older people, and then we looked across the TV and the laptop, we see that the attrition is roughly the same. However, we do see the, a sharper drop on television for the, for the respondents that were under 35 years old. So what were the respondent behaviors? This, I think, is probably the more, uh, really gets down to the nitty gritty. Um, when you're in a group setting, the potential for multitasking exists um, to a greater degree. Um, but we find out that men and women multitask in this environment to roughly the same amount of time. And then, of course, we found that the younger people were more inclined to multitask than the older people. And if you look, 
In that whole 20 minute experience, 60% had 10 distinct behaviors. So nobody was just firmly planted and just zoning into one thing. And that was kind of the, the goal of the exercise. But if you look at the 20% had over 40 distinct behaviors, and I'll give you an example of how that looks. So this chart really takes two of the people um, that we observed. And if you look on the left, and how to read this is that you have what they were doing. This is chatting, and then you can see the screens over there. And this kind of runs minute by minute across the whole experience. And you know, who, who's not familiar with this, these people who really turn on the TV and kept their attention there the entire time? That's some of us, that's part of us, and that could be none of us at the same time. This just exhibits a type of TV behavior that when they're fixated on a content that they're highly engaged in, they'll tend to stick around more, but you do see breaks in the action, right? Because it's hard to keep attention focused. Everybody wants mental breaks from time to time, and especially in this environment, uh, that held true. So now we have people coming in here, and they're starting to switch their attention, their primary device, into other places. And you can see that when you get to the laptop, the attention tends to stay focused. There's slight breaks here and there. Uh, looking up at the TV, but this is primarily a digital person, and you've got uh, a mobile person here. If you look at the content that was viewed, uh, this one was the Hulu original program, Hot Wives of, of Orlando. And you know, during the time, while they're, while they're paying attention to the device, they're interacting with other devices, and they have sampling points. Um, and this, this is what we see a lot of when we look at premium content being viewed online. And then you get down to the, the smartphone user, and you can see sampling behavior. They started with the computer, primarily digital folk. And then once they got to the smartphone, they knew exactly where they wanted to go and what content they wanted to see, which is late night talk show clips. And over the course of time, you see behaviors where they're sampling, and then they decided to fixate on that device. So engagement can happen across all devices is really the key. But I wanted to show you the last person, which is probably us some of the time as well. This DNA really uh, speaks to the type of content they're viewing, and to some extent, maybe the type of person who's viewing it. I've got local news. I don't know many people, the studies we do in terms of engagement, finds that local news is, is highly susceptible for multitasking behavior. You're getting ready in the morning. You're doing a bunch of things while absorbing the information at the same time. And then we've got the baseball watching on TV. The, the MLB playoffs were happening around this time. So the guy turned on the TV, and I said there was a couple of people in this room. They turned on the TV, were watching segments of the game, and then all of a sudden just started jumping on other devices. They're still absorbing what's going on in the baseball environment, but at the same time, they're just sampling. They're talking about things at the same time. This is. There's a lot more evidence to show that this is starting to become the DNA, ah, sorry, DNA of people. And so with that, I wanted to bring it back to Travis so that he can talk about what the implications are for brands and advertisers. All right. This is where I have to take back over because Tommy working at Nielsen doesn't say unflattering things about TV advertising. Um, but we... We, uh, we did see that there's very different attention levels across devices. And some of that is inherent to the experience in those devices. Uh, and some of it just has to do with how user-directed the experiences on the devices are. So television, you know, a little less than half of the time were people paying their undivided attention to the TV screen. It was a little bit more than that for the connected devices. And we saw also in the data that TV tended to grab people's attention early on and it would diminish over time as they got distracted by a bunch of other things. These other things that they got distracted by were usually other connected devices and the attention on those devices tends to increase over time because they're very user-directed experiences. They're not kind of like set and forget type of experiences. So people kind of get drawn in to their interaction with these devices, then it actually increases their attention over time, at least in a 20 minute time period. But when you look at the same data for advertising, the story is similar, yet 
a little bit more extreme. So on TV, uh, less than 40% of the time paying undivided attention to the TV, but on TV ad pods, it was even worse. On the connected devices, um, during ad time, it was actually even a little bit better than the average during content time, and that's because a lot of the ads on the connected devices were triggered by a user action and occurred when someone was trying to call up content, so like a pre-roll, for example. On TV, on the other hand, you have this rhythm to TV advertising, which is, you know, content, ad pod, content, ad pod. People are very well aware of this rhythm, and they kind of use it to check in and check out. We've seen that in other story, studies as well. So every, every study kind of has the, the money slide, so to speak, that wraps up the whole study. And for me, this is kind of it. So if you were to buy 100 ads on TV, according to this sample of 200 consumers, about 30 of those ads would be viewed by consumers who are paying attention to the TV at the time that the ad runs. It's about the inverse, or even a little bit better, on digital devices, again, because most of the ads on the digital devices were triggered by a user action. So they're inherently catching the user while they're paying attention. Um, so just to wrap up the, up the study on a high level, um, we see that most media consumers these days are multitasking no matter what they're doing. Um, it's very uncommon these days for a consumer to be giving their undivided attention to a single screen for a long period of time. TV is still absolutely the go-to medium of choice in terms of what devices are most frequently used when people are in a mode where they want to watch video content. Um, but it's kind of like wallpaper or the light in the room. You kind of turn it on, but that doesn't mean you're going to give it your undivided attention. It's just kind of the companion that's there with you while you're splitting your attention across a number of different tasks, some of which uh, are happening on the TV screen itself. Digital devices, like I just mentioned, tend to uh, increase engagement over time as people come, become more invested with their experience on those devices. So you're, 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 you're looking up some content specific to an interest at that point in time, and you, you, you are directing that experience, which increases the engagement over time. And because of that increased engagement, and because of the fact that ads are typically triggered by a user action, digital environments benefit uh, relative to TV. Now, we would, never, we would never suggest that TV advertising is not a fundamental uh, piece of any brand advertiser's media plan. It's, it, it's the best mass reach medium there is. But we would suggest that these connected devices give brand advertisers a, a, a really important opportunity to reach consumers uh, simultaneously at higher levels of attention. So. Uh, th this was obviously a, a quick version of the study. We have much more. So to the extent that uh, you have any interest in this study or others, there's a URL where it can be found. And Tommy and I will be around if you have any questions. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So we're going to um, take uh, just a few minutes for some questions, some very interesting data, Travis, yeah. uh, that you guys just presented. Up, um, yeah, because you can't, you can't show data like this with people like ABC in the room and, and get away <laughs> with it. Um, <laughs> That's where I hide behind Tommy. So, so um, and I don't know if anybody from ABC is left, but uh, what I would say is, uh, first question, um, linear content with a beginning, a middle, and an end would naturally incline you to watch the episode through. And I appreciate that you showed some examples of content that you tested it on. Yeah. Did you factor for type of content that you were playing? Because obviously, unscripted drama like Housewives is not exactly comedy, it would be considered unscripted drama, right? Correct. So within the category, how did you factor for what kinds of content? Yeah, so I mean, you had 200 respondents there, and it's kind of a free observation environment. So what we try to do is we, we did uh, look at the content they were viewing, because um, that helped us really understand how many, when they were actually exposed to an ad during that experience. And then we can actually code what they were doing. So. Uh, among those respondents, we try to narrow down the content as much as possible so that we can derive some of those early DNA charts where you've got uh, people watching long form content, getting engaged. I think the hangover part three was one of the, the top ones. And really, 
there, once you got embedded into the story, the inclination is to watch all the way through. Now, if you looked at things like news or sports, um, that doesn't necessarily have a clear beginning Correct. and an end. And those tend to be segment viewing opportunities, and then you just saw the DNA. Right. And probably second. better second screen viewing experiences, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Right. Great. Other questions about the data from anyone? Yes, yes. Here, here's a mic. content memory, like what did they remember what they saw, like of what specific ads that they saw of the program? Yeah, I mean, uh, at the end of the exercise, and uh, granted, it was, it's a very difficult thing for the respondents because they're totally not clued into exactly what the purpose of the study was. They were just really recruited off the floor and said, hey, we've got a bunch of devices uh, available for you and some video content. Knock yourself out. For 20 minutes, we'll be observing you, and you have the free uh, rain to do whatever you please. At the end of that, we kind of hit them with the question, so out of the ads that you saw, did you get, do you recall any of them? And you know, really throughout the course of it, we found out that that's, that was a pretty unfair time to hit them with that because the recall levels were fairly low because that's not what they were paying attention to. They were actually more focused on identifying things to watch. They did have some recall of some ads, but you know, overall the, the large part I think due to, due to their mindsets going into the experience, uh, we didn't capture a lot of good, solid, statistically relevant data in, in regards to ad recall. Dave Smith from MediaSmith. Are you going to be able to share these uh, charts? Yes, we, we are going to release this study, at, well, right now. Um, so yes, we, we can. This was, we, we, we had not released it up until this point, but it will be available on our website. Um, absolutely. And we have a lot more data than was in this kind of Cliff's Notes version as well. That's also going to be available. So how about a hand for this investment, really, by Yumi to do a study like this. Really good investment, and thank you for, thank you for using this forum to present the results. We really appreciate that.